Hi everyone and welcome back to another video from Psychology World. Today we'll be investigating the freeze, flight, fight, fright, flag and faint response. It's definitely quite a mouthful and probably for brevity you might know it as the shorter freeze, flight or fight response. The freeze response. You see a fret and for a second your heart rate is lowered, your motor response is reduced and there is an increase in attention to fret, also known as hypervigilance. It is from this orienting response that we are primed to evaluate the fret, and then either run or fight. It is thought that this response is evolutionary. The majority of our age-old mammalian predators were colorblind and looked for movement, and therefore it is presumed that we have an inbuilt system to evaluate before we shoot off. The next step in our fret response is to either run or fight. If it is perceived that it is a major fret because of a sudden increase in proximity or because of size, then the body changes from freeze to flight or fight. The body's first response is to flee. This involves the full response of the sympathetic nervous system. The brain releases adrenaline, noradrenaline and endorphins into the body. This increases rate of breathing, heart rate, blood pressure and muscle tension. There is also constricting of vessels that are seen as peripheral, keeping more blood to the vital organs. The stomach will also shut down and the bowels can then release any unprocessed food. If the person is stuck in a corner or can't escape, then the body will respond with anger. Depending on the person's felt battlesomeness, which is a term used to assess their felt ability to beat the attacker. The reduced pain allows for people to carry on even when hurt. The reduced blood flow to the peripheral vessels allows for more loss of blood in our less vital body parts. However, the increased blood flow to the major muscle groups allows for more explosive and sustained power. The paper then suggests that we have a point where the body goes into fright, which is where the body starts to shut down. This may be because the animal has sustained damage, or where the animal has been unsuccessful in their counter-attack. In this stage, the muscles are extremely rigid and the movements are limited. Tonic immobility is where the person is completely still, but inside they are highly alert. Think about a ball of excitatory energy trapped inside a motionless body. This happens most commonly when an animal feels entrapped. In this state, there is reduced pain and the animal can feel paralyzed. This can last for seconds and then go quickly back to the flea response, or depending on the animal, can result in hours of immobility. The hope being that the predator will loosen their grip for a second, thinking you are already dead. Stages five, flag, and six, faint, are where there is no longer an attentive alertedness inside but instead there is an unresponsive immobility. There is a drop in heart rate and blood pressure. The verbal areas of the brain stop production of words. The brain stops to act as a global processing unit. Memory consolidation is affected and even our visual cortex can start to shut down. This process can slowly lead to fainting. Stages four through to six are where dissociation is starting to occur. The brain is shutting down and is no longer functioning the same way as a consciously aware brain. Information is processed differently, if at all. This can lead to disorders such as dissociative disorder and dissociative identity disorder, but is most commonly seen in PTSD. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Please ask any questions below. I've read the paper many times now and I have a good understanding of PTSD to answer any questions. Please remember to like and subscribe. This encourages me to create even more videos on my channel.